body weight or barbells? Which one should you choose to get your body in shape? This might not be the most important decision of your life, but it's still something you should consider if you're thinking of training or even if you currently are. Both of these training systems have their pros and cons that you could benefit from as well as some negatives. The truth is that an awesome program will contain elements of both. But what about if we separate them? What stands out as the ideal choice? This video is going to dissect the variables that set them apart so that you can decide what is best for you. And be sure to stick around and we will tell you which we think is the best. Don't worry, we're not going to cop out and say they're both the best. We'll give you an answer. Let's get this showdown started. We're lucky enough to live in a world where we have the opportunity to prioritize our physical activity and we have multiple ways to do it. Two very popular styles are calisthenics versus weightlifting, and the fact we can choose between them is a blessing in itself. You can't lose. Now these two training methods are about as opposite as you can get. One favors athleticism and is known for acrobatic-like maneuvers, while the other favors mass and strength and is known for huge deadlifts and bicep curls. Interestingly though, even with their differences, calisthenics and weightlifting mesh together like peanut butter and jelly. This is why the majority of effective training programs will have elements of both. However, for this video, we're going to put this obvious compromise on the sidelines and have them go head to head. Before we get to the rest of the video, we need to first give a clear definition for these two training methods. We can't make a comparison if we don't know what we're talking about. With that said, what is weightlifting? Weightlifting is the most popular type of training and is what you think of when you think about going to the gym. It's a form of resistance training that involves using external loads, either free weights or machines, to place a stimulus on the muscles. Popular exercises include the bench press, barbell back squat, and deadlift. So what is calisthenics? The easiest definition for calisthenics is its bodyweight movements. Instead of using external loads, calisthenics is a method of training that only uses the body as a loading mechanism. This is done by progressing through more challenging movements with the highest level containing various types of acrobatics. Lately, calisthenics has gained a ton of popularity thanks to the rise of interest in prison-style workouts as well as street workouts. Still, it has been looked at as a lone wolf in the fitness industry. Some considered it the purest form of strength training. Even if you've never done calisthenics, you have almost certainly done some calisthenic exercises. In fact, many of the best exercises we do on a regular basis are actually calisthenics. We're talking about push-ups, dips, lunges, and chin-ups. Heck, even exercises such as box jumps are calisthenic exercises. Therefore, for the remainder of this video then, when we refer to calisthenics, we are referring to the entire system, not specific exercises picked out in isolation. Therefore, calisthenics means you're only doing calisthenics. Let's remember the goal of this video before we go further. This video is going to give you the information you need to decide what's best for you, not necessarily what is the best. Nevertheless, we will tell you our opinion on what tends to be most effective for the majority of people. We think the best way to compare these styles of training is to place different variables head to head so that you can compare and contrast point by point. We will provide you with all the information you need to make an informed decision. Let's get into it with a big factor, the cost. As calisthenics involves using your body as a load for your exercises, it's the cheapest option you have for training. Free. Well, kind of. When people first start, it can be very useful to have access to a pair of resistance bands to help assist with some exercises such as pull-ups. At the same time, some people will use an external load to help make a movement harder. This might look like holding a kettlebell with your feet while doing chin-ups. There are also certain pieces of equipment you can buy, such as TRX or parallettes. However, this isn't necessary at first and could be bought later on. When you first start, the only thing you should have access to is a park that has a set of pull-up bars. So unless you will start by setting up TRX in your yard, you basically just need gas money or better yet, a bicycle. In comparison, weightlifting is going to cost you some money. Your first option is going to be buying your own equipment, but this is going to cost a nice little chunk of money up front. Expect to drop at least $1,500 for a decent home gym that will allow you to train your main lifts. Now, over the long run, this could be worth it, but you don't need to be a mathematician to know $1,500 is much more expensive than free. Your other option is going to cost less up front, but can add up over time. We're talking about a gym membership. Still, even though it's not as big of a commitment financially, the unfortunate truth is that gym memberships aren't getting any cheaper these days. The average gym membership could set you back anywhere from $10 to $100 a month, but the average is around the $40 to $50 range. As we look at the gym as being an investment into one's health, we definitely think it's still worth it. 
However, it is another expense and in these times, with everything getting so expensive, we understand it can be a big ask for some people. Now the good news is you can find some decent gyms that are less than $20 a month, but still, even $20 is more than free, $20 more to be exact. Therefore, when we look at pricing, training calisthenics will be the better option for those looking to save money. Now let's look into ease of entry. Let's take an average person who is looking to start training. Would it be easier to start weightlifting or calisthenics? Our answer might surprise you due to a false perception of bodyweight exercises. When we talk about calisthenics, many people automatically think that it's an easier form of training and is easier to do. For example, you may hear a trainer say to just do bodyweight exercises for a recovery workout. It's often implied that bodyweight exercises are less stressful on the body or that you should have beginners do bodyweight exercises as they're safer. We mean, you're not lifting up barbells and heavy weights, you just need to lift your body, right? We're not sure where this idea came from, but it couldn't be farther from the truth. Now for experienced lifters and athletes, it may be true to say that bodyweight movements make a great recovery workout. However, right now we're talking about ease of entry. We're talking about a beginner who wants to start training. For this population, calisthenics is extremely difficult to do, even your basic exercises. Our team has members who have been trainers for decades, and we know firsthand that the average person new to training cannot perform a single proper chin-up. In fact, it's not uncommon for a person to not be able to perform a single push-up with good form. And these are your basics, your bread and butter. This is why there are programs that are specifically designed to get your first pull-up and these can take months to complete. The reason being is you only have one choice for a load, your body weight. Compare that to a lat pull-down, the weightlifting equivalent to a pull-up, which allows you to pull just a few pounds at a time if you want. Sure, you can modify some calisthenic exercises to make a movement easier, but it can still be very difficult. Let's compare that to weightlifting. You will have access to an array of weights and machines that allows you to choose from dozens of exercises, all of which can be loaded with as little weight as you want. When it comes to bench press, we tend to always think of big guys benching three plates. Therefore, this may seem funny, but in reality, the bench press is easier for an elderly trainee when compared to a push-up. You can go very light with the bench press. If needed, you can use specialty training bars at only 5 or 10 pounds. Compare that to the push-up, which requires pushing all of your weight. At the same time, you have significantly more options to train a certain muscle group with weightlifting. Imagine you start calisthenics, and you can only do a chin-up and maybe an inverted row if you have access to a low bar. You will likely have to train for months, which will consist solely of working on your pull-up with the inverted row as your only alternative exercise. This can be a bit of a downer for some people. However, in the gym, you can set up a lat pull-down with basically any weight you want. You can then train other types of rows and slowly progress – seated row, dumbbell row, high row, landmine row, and so on. This approach tends to be much more encouraging for beginner weightlifters. Therefore, weightlifting is usually the easier method for a trainees to begin their strength journey. Now let's move to a very specific issue, which is more appropriate for someone wanting to lose weight. It's no secret that one of the most common reasons people want to start training is to lose weight. This implies that the person is overweight and is looking for the most effective approach. This is simple. If you are overweight, calisthenics will be next to impossible to start with. As there is no other choice to lift other than your body, it's not uncommon to suggest to an overweight person that they focus on losing weight before they even try calisthenics. If you don't, an overweight trainee will be asked to start lifting a lot of weight on their first day of calisthenics. Therefore, if you are overweight, calisthenics can be discouraging. Stick with the gym and focus on weight loss as you strengthen your muscles. You can then go back to calisthenics at a different point. Now, after you get started, which method is best for long-time use? Both methods have paths that can be followed long-term. However, they will look very different. Let's consider the fact that calisthenics is actually composed of a very small group of exercises. In fact, if we were to list every exercise you can do, you'd see that many of them are simply variations and progressions to just a few primary exercises. Now, mastering the most advanced exercises can take years and years of practice. We're talking about knocking out a human flag, planche, or a front lever. Training for these exercises can be very effective at increasing strength. However, people can simply get bored of this. Working on these exercises takes years, and it can seem more like skill development than exercise. On the other hand, some people love calisthenics because of this. They love the challenge that calisthenics provides them. Making small improvements so small that other people won't even be able to notice is enough to motivate them and keep them going. 
However, this is the minority from our experience. Compare this to weightlifting, which has a plethora of exercises and pieces of equipment. You can always add some spice to your training. You want a deadlift? You can do conventional deadlift, sumo deadlift, trap bar deadlift, axle bar deadlift, Romanian deadlift, snatch grip deadlift, landmine deadlift. It's like a buffet of choices. So much to choose from. Further, improving upon these is qualitative and easy to measure. Week 1 you benched 170 pounds, and week 4 you benched 175 pounds. No question about it, you got stronger. Being able to measure these improvements tend to be more motivational for average lifters. One more thing to consider, as long as you can put weight on the bar, there's always room to improve with weightlifting. At the same time, you also have the choice to add as little as you want. This is very important when looking at long-term progress. Progressing can become significantly more difficult the longer you train for. Being able to always add small amounts of weight is the key to long-term success. On the contrary, progressing through calisthenics means to alter your body's positioning and movement to make an exercise harder. This is far less exact. While you can definitely still do it, it's simply not as easy. Therefore, when it comes to long-term use, our pick goes to weightlifting. Now, the past few variables have primarily been looking at these two methods of training from a physical viewpoint. Now let's look at the mental aspect of training, which is more enjoyable. Now the term enjoyable is obviously subjective, however, we think we can answer this for the vast amount of people. Let's go on a mental journey. Picture this, you're by yourself in a park. You may or may not have music and no one else is around. It's a bit hot, but you can't turn down the AC because there is no AC, there's not even a fan. As there's no one around, there's no one to talk to or get advice from, but there's also no one to push you. No one will know if you did your whole workout or if you even worked out at all. Now picture another scenario. You're in a climate-controlled gym, warming up on a piece of cardio with a built-in fan. There's no bugs and the sun isn't beating down on you. As you train, there's a slew of other guys and girls training hard that acts as motivation in itself. There's also some veterans around that you can get some quick advice from. Oh yeah, there's also a sauna and shower in the bathroom. Now, this is a bit exaggerated, but it's to make a point. In these scenarios, it takes a specific person to thrive in the first scenario, and it tends to be the minority. We want to make a side note here. We realize that you could do calisthenics inside a gym. However, if you were inside a gym, this shouldn't even be a decision as you've already paid for a gym membership, and you should just use both. Okay, let's keep moving. Now, being outside in nature does have some benefits, assuming it's a nice day. Research has shown that training outdoors can result in a marked improvement in mental health by reducing stress, improving mood, and improving self-esteem. However, the same can be said for working out in general. Further, most people are motivated when training in the presence of other people, regardless of talking or not. We do know that on average, people will train harder and perform more work under supervision. This has been shown in studies. At the same time, we have a ton of anecdotal reports from regular trainees who report lifting harder while around other lifters, particularly of the opposite sex. Now you can find a calisthenics training partner, but it is significantly less common so finding one will be harder. Then consider there's always someone at the gym. Therefore, for the vast majority of people, weightlifting will generally be a more enjoyable experience as well as being more motivating. Before we get to the most important question there is, let's find out which one is harder. Or should we say, more rewarding? When it comes to weightlifting, it's as hard as you want to make it. As you use an external loading mechanism, a lifter can adjust the weight so it suits their strength level. Feeling a little tired? Take off some weight! Did you get the best night of sleep ever? Try a few more pounds! However, when it comes to calisthenics, you don't have a ton of options. One of the most popular ways to increase the load is to use progressions in a movement. For example, working from a push-up to a single-arm push-up, or you can work from an assisted pull-up to a pull-up to an archer pull-up. One of the holy grails of calisthenics is a muscle-up. However, progressing to the advanced variations of exercises takes a lot of time. You can spend months just to get one step higher in a progression plan. Now when you do, it feels amazing. This is why doing muscle-ups will generally get more attention than a five-plate deadlift. These can take a similar amount of time to achieve, but the muscle-up tends to be more exciting. So, in this context, it's safe to say that calisthenics is more challenging than weightlifting. Now let's look at the big one. Which is more effective, calisthenics or weightlifting? As you can imagine, there's a lot of nuance to dig through to fully answer this. We first want to say that both of these methods are very effective at improving fitness, building strength, and increasing muscle mass. Somewhere along the line, a rumor started that said calisthenics isn't good at building muscle. Let's nip this in the bud right now. Yes, it can. 
Lifting and pushing your body weight provides the exact same stimulus to your body as lifting and pushing weights. It's not as if your muscles are communicating that you're only doing push-ups so they don't need to grow bigger and stronger. A stimulus is a stimulus. In fact, studies have measured the muscle activation of push-ups and bench press at comparable loads, push-ups using a resistance band to load the movement. Researchers found that not only do they result in similar levels of muscle activation, they result in similar increases in strength and muscle gains. So yes, they're both effective. However, they are not equal. We want to draw your attention to the fact that doing push-ups in the study required the use of a thick resistance band to produce enough force. This means that an additional external force was required. Let's assume that we're not purists, and this still counts as calisthenics. The fact is that not every movement pattern can be manipulated so easily. And while you could use harder progressions like working to a one-arm push-up, you're still limited to your body weight in these scenarios, and these progression are not incrementally equal. In other words, you can't continuously add two and a half pounds to the movement like you can with weightlifting. Another issue is that there simply aren't as many exercises to do, not to mention it's near impossible to do isolations. With weightlifting, you can literally have dozens of exercises for each movement pattern. However, for calisthenics, you can't even perform some movement patterns. Perhaps the biggest drawback that calisthenics has regarding its overall effectiveness is building muscle is in the lower body. There's a pretty common stereotype in the fitness world against people who do calisthenics that says they all have skinny legs. This isn't entirely untrue, at least when compared to those who train legs at the gym. What gives this some legitimacy is that there is only so much you can do to load your legs with calisthenics. Think about this. If you go to the gym, are you going to do bench press with the same weight you do leg press? Of course not. Your legs are significantly stronger than your upper body and need a heavier load to provide a sufficient stimulus. The problem is you only have your body as a load, meaning you're training both your upper body and lower body with the same weight. Now you can do variations of squats to place a heavier load on your legs, such as single leg squats. However, these are actually attainable relatively easy and are nowhere near the same as doing heavy squats, deadlifts, and leg press. In addition, while you can do squats, doing any sort of hip hinge with a meaningful load is basically impossible. So while you can definitely build a solid pair of legs with calisthenics, weightlifting is definitely more effective. So due to this, along with the large variety of exercises and ability to load, we think that when taken in isolation and having to choose, weightlifting is overall more effective. We've now gone through just about all of the important variables that separate these two awesome forms of training. So by now, you should have a pretty good idea of what's best for you. So what's our opinion? Well, the obvious answer is to use both. Just about all of the programs we suggest include a mixture, and some of our favorite exercises are calisthenics, such as the dip or pull-up. However, we told you we had a favorite, and we do. We think that for the majority of people looking to start training, weightlifting is the more appropriate choice due to all the reasons we spoke about, but primarily due to the variety of exercises and ease of progression. Is that what you thought?